Hi, Mrs. Rock here. I'm just waiting for my friend Roy. He hasn't shown up yet. Have you seen Roy? He's about this big and he's rainbow colored and he's a snail. You have seen him? Where? Oh, there he is. Hey Roy, how's it going? I'm so glad you're here. Roy is a very special kind of snail. He's rainbow colored. Roy is short for Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv is an acronym. It stands for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. All the colors in the rainbow. Well, today we're gonna get inspired by Roy G. Biv to draw our own Roy G. Biv snail drawing. Let's get started. Here are the materials you're going to need. To draw the outline of your snail, you could use a black Sharpie or a black crayon or a marker or pencil, whatever you prefer. I'm going to be using a black crayon today. I'm going to start off with the body of my snail and I want to make sure that the snail shell fills the page. I'm going to have my paper landscape style in front of me. That means horizontal across like this and I want to visualize where my snail is going to be in the middle of my page. I want it bigger than my fist so if I ball up my hand like a fist and I put it in the middle of my paper my snail is going to be bigger than my fist. So when I start making my snail shell I'm going to start on the left side and draw like I'm going to make a big circle but my circle is not going to connect all the way with that end instead I'm going to make my circle get smaller and this is called making a spiral I'm making a spiral it's a line that does not touch itself so I've made a big spiral line in the middle of my paper, and that is going to be my snail shell. Next, I'm going to close up this end of my snail shell, just with a little curved line like that. And my snail head is going to be sticking out this way, and the tail will be over here. So my head is going to come up and down and curve in like that. And the tail is just going to be like a long sideways V coming out to the side. Next, my snail needs those little parts sticking up from the head, like little antenna. There's one with a circle on top and it comes back down. And two with a circle on top and it comes back down. And then I can put two dots to show the little eyes of my snail. And I can give my snail a little snail smile. So cute. Next, I'm going to divide up my snail shell in different segments. So I'm going to use my crayon and about every two fingers or so, I'm going to draw a line to create little segments all along my snail shell spiral here till I get to the middle. And my line always points towards the center of my snail shell. Getting smaller and smaller till I reach the end here. The next thing I'm going to need is a horizon line. I need to show that my snail is somewhere. He's not just floating in space. He's slithering across the ground, creating that slimy snail trail. So I'm going to use either a straight edge or you could use a ruler. And I'm going to make a line that's called a horizon line. So I'm going to start at the edge of my snail shell 
and make my line go out towards the edge of my paper. Same thing here. There's a little window here in between the head and the shell. And then I need to extend my line from the head all the way out to the edge of my paper. Now it looks like my snail is somewhere. Let's add some background. Now I see a lot of students draw a sun in the corner of their paper like that. But what if we made our sun a circle? It's going to look a little bit more advanced if we make our sun a complete circle in the sky. Now I'm gonna show you how to make some colorful rays for our sun. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw an even bigger circle around the sun like that. And just like we did here, drawing these little line segments on the spiral shell, we're gonna be drawing some lines that come out from the middle of our sun. And it doesn't matter how many, we're gonna be coloring in these sections later. Now I noticed that the snail doesn't have anything on the ground here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some texture on the ground. Maybe the ground has some little pebbles, some little rocks. So what I do is I'm going to draw some of these little ovals. They don't all have to be perfect. Some of them can be more circular. Some of them can be smaller. Some of them can be bigger. And I'm just going to draw some of these little pebbles, these little rocks, these little grains of sand, kind of underneath where our snail is crawling. So that shows some texture on our ground. Some of them can even be back behind. And I'm gonna make them look a little bit smaller back here so they look further away. And some of them can even be just dots to show texture. So I'm going to use my crayon. I'm not banging it on my paper. Instead, I'm drawing little dots here on the ground to show some texture on the ground. Texture is the way something feels or the way it appears to feel. I'm going to be drawing some tulips. A tulip is a kind of flower. First, I'm just going to draw the stem. And the stem is going to be sticking up back here. Might even be one back behind the snail here. Maybe one here. Maybe a shorter one. Maybe a taller one right here. I might even add a really tall one sticking up behind our little snail friend here. Now the tops of our tulips are going to have some petals and the petals are going to look like a teardrop shape and then they curve up and down to the side, other side curve up and down. And then you can even give them some more upside down V shapes to look like more petals. Okay, so make a teardrop shape, curve up and in, curve up and in. Now my tulips need a little leaf coming up. Tulips have long, thin leaves. Also in my background, I can even add some fluffy clouds. I'm 
going to be using markers today, but you could use markers or crayons or colored pencils, whatever you prefer to color with. Let's start with our snail shell. Now this isn't any ordinary snail. This is a Roy G. Biv snail. Roy G. Biv is an acronym and it stands for the order of the colors in the rainbow. R is red, O is orange, Y is yellow, G green, B is for blue, I is for indigo or blue violet, and V is for violet, and violet is what artists call purple. So we're gonna start with this segment closest to our snail shell head, and we're gonna color it red for the R in Roy G. Biv. When you're coloring, remember to color really neatly, going back and forth in the same direction and getting all of your peekaboo spots. You want to fill in the whole space and color really neatly. Next is O. O is for orange. Y is for yellow. G is for green. B is for blue. I is for indigo or blue violet. And you can do that by layering a little bit of blue and putting some violet on top of it. V is for violet, also known as purple. And then the pattern starts all over again. So again, red comes next. You keep repeating the pattern until you run out of segments for your snail shell. So fun! Let's move on to our sun. All of the colors fit into different families. The warm color families are red, orange, and yellow, and also pink because pink is a tint of red. So for our sun, let's just use the warm colors. I'm going to start off with yellow in the middle. Now around our sun in these different segments, we can use the other warm colors like orange, red, and also pink. Warm colors can make you feel really energized and excited and warm. Now for our background where we have our flowers and our sky, let's use the cool color family. The cool color family consists of green, blue, turquoise, indigo and violet. These are all the cool colors in the cool color family. So I'm going to use the cool colors to color my tulips and the sky. Cool colors are often really calming and make you feel relaxed and at ease. It's important to remember that the blue of the sky comes all the way down to the horizon line. Sometimes I'll see students that have just a blue stripe across the top of their paper, but that's not right. You've got to make sure your blue comes all the way down to your horizon line, filling up the whole space where the sky is, not just a blue stripe across the top. 
Now let's talk about the neutral color family. The neutral color family are the colors that remind us of the earth, like browns and grays and black and white. So we're going to color our ground with the neutral colors. Now, all that's left is the body of our snail. It's totally up to you what color you would like to color your snail. Hmm, I think I haven't used this hot pink color yet, so that's the color that I'm gonna use for my snail body, but it's totally up to you. And there we go. I had so much fun making my Roy G. Biv snail with you today. Remember, yours might look a little bit different than mine, and that's okay, because when you're creating, the possibilities are endless.